So this is all about communicating your policy um, because there's no point having a good policy if it's just going to do these days what is the electronic equivalent of sitting on a shelf and gathering dust. So the first thing we look at is communicating it. So how are you going to communicate it? And that can be through a staff newsletter. It could be as a meeting agenda item, for example. Um, and this is subsequent to the consultation process that's already happened to develop the policy. Then we want to embed this policy in our workplace as part of the culture. Um, so that can be included in induction. But uh, one of the challenges that can come up is people can read policies once during induction and then not look at them again ever. Um, so it's really helpful to accompany a policy like this with training and you know plug DFE work aware does provide free training um, to community services workplaces um, and not to just do training but to do refresher training because you know people will lose track of things in their mind um, as their brain is filled up with other things so in the same way that we do regular fire safety training for example um, it's good to do regular refresher training in in areas like this to really build people's confidence and knowledge um, then we can promote our policy and we can promote that in conjunction with um, events. So we have Domestic and Family Violence Prevention Month in May here in Queensland. Um, we have um, Women's Week in March here in Queensland. Um, and there may be other days or months um, or events that you might want to pair this, this policy with and promote it to your staff. Then we look at accessibility. So how can staff access this policy? Do they have to click through 10 different things in a file tree to get to it? Or is it nice and easily accessible in a really obvious um, policy manual or, or on your intranet? And when we talk about accessibility, we also, we're also talking about accessibility um, for people who may have um, vision impairment or blindness or other disabilities that may make it challenging to access the information in these policies. <clears throat> Then we can consider how does this policy link with um, other policies and initiatives? So this is something I tend to um, carry on about a bit. Um, domestic and family violence is often treated as being quite siloed from other issues. It's sort of over here. But domestic and family violence has links to all sorts of things um, in our lives and in our communities. So for example, people who experience domestic and family violence are more likely to experience mental health impacts, the impact impacts of trauma um, and also um, to experience long-term physical health impacts as well. So domestic and family violence policies and initiatives link quite nicely to any mental health and wellbeing initiatives that you have, any physical health and wellbeing initiatives that you have. So you don't necessarily have to um, think up a whole new thing. You can actually link it to existing policies and bring this really holistic, supportive um, workplace culture into being. Other things you can do is bring in other training as well. So a training that can be really helpful is um, what's known as bystander training. So that's training um, staff to recognise when there's something not okay, like um, inappropriate comments and behaviours and how they can safely um, uh, speak up or, or report if it's not safe for them to intervene. So Griffith University runs the MATE Bystander Program and they can come to your workplace or deliver online um, training sessions um, in how to um, be a be a good bystander as well as to build um, uh, workplaces that have that really strong culture. And No to Violence, which is in uh, Melbourne, um, also it, it provides national services, including the Men's Referral Service, and they also run um, bystander training, including their everyday conversations training. So it's helpful to think more broadly than just, okay, we've got this policy, let's focus on this. It's helpful to think holistically and how this can link into all sorts, sorts of other initiatives that um, we can do to make workplaces, you know, really healthy and safe for everybody.